for me as a chef, I've seen so many different cuisines and different ways of of cooking with with different uh, food items. It was just for me. It was it was a pleasure. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, I've been around, um, traveled to a couple of countries. Actually, I, I, I lived and worked in 11 countries. And uh, um, asking me if there's a special place, I, I would just say that every country is, uh, is unique and every country has something special. Um, I left Germany, um, I was 30 something, and um, I left because I couldn't get a job because uh, I couldn't speak English. That was the reason why I left uh, Germany. Leaving Germany at that time was, of the two decisions I will never regret, that was one of them. And uh, I went to England, uh, you know, I lived there a couple of years and I went to Dubai and uh, in the Middle East, uh, been to a couple of countries in Bahrain, um, then we went to Egypt, to Cairo went to Russia, we lived in the Seychelles, um, and uh, every country, it doesn't matter where it was, it was just unique, and I have thoroughly, uh, thoroughly enjoyed every minute in every country. It was really a pleasure. And on top of this, I have, I have seen so many different cultures, but for me as a chef, I've seen so many different cuisines and different ways of, of cooking with, with different uh, food items. It was just, for me, it was, it was a pleasure, it was brilliant. And I would never, and I don't want to miss any minute of my journey. Um, I, 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 I think so. I mean, I can, I can give you an actual example. We just, just uh, writing the menu for the winter and uh, one of the chefs were asking me about a soup and I said, you know, how about a borch, which is a, a Russian soup and I said, you know, let's do a duck borch and create something, you know, around that really special uh, Russian soup. And uh, so in the next menu we will have a, a borch which will be a bit tweaked, you know, but yes, it has an influence in my cuisine, absolutely. Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern cuisine uh, had uh, a big influence on me, obviously. Um, I like uh, the way they cook and, uh, you know, unconsciously the cuisine they do is very healthy because they use a lot of vegetables and uh, many of the dishes are actually vegan and, you know, the vegan influence comes more and more. In a natural way? Yeah, absolutely, you know, hummus, for example, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I use that a lot because I've been trained on this and uh, I even cook it at home. And if you ask me about the English influence, uh, yes, of course, it has a big influence on me. I lived there for, for many years. I've worked in a, in a great hotel in London and uh, despite my chef was German, we cooked English food and it was, it was great. I mean, yeah, we can start here with Epoca, which is uh, patronized by uh, Tristan, Tristan Brandt uh, from Germany, a uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant chef. Uh, we started this journey in December yep. and uh, I'm sure it will go many, many years. It's fantastic uh, what they do here. I really enjoy when I look at the guys here at the chefs. And uh, yeah, Epoca is one of our a uh, few restaurants, then we have the uh, Shadafu bar next door, mm -hmm. which is a very nice bar with a chimney, you know, you can sit there in winter um, and just Cozy. Warm, warm your hands <laughs> and have a glue vine or a glass of champagne, you know. <laughs> we have um, Fairus, which is a, a Lebanese restaurant. Yeah. We um, have a very nice and a very talented Lebanese chef. Okay. Um, very good. Many, many people really come uh, because of him. We have uh, Siam, which is uh, Thai. We have a very talented Thai crew in there. Thai chefs who cook authentic uh, Thai food. Mm -hmm. Very good, not, you know, not too, too spicy. Mm -hmm. You know, just, it is spicy, you know, if you choose the dish which has a bit of chili inside, you know. Um, but it's not 
not really that spicy spice. I mean, I've been to Bangkok myself and I know how spicy food can be. You know, they, <laughs> they lead us to a restaurant which was uh, purely for the locals and it was <laughs> very spicy. But uh, no, this is uh, perfect here for the, uh, you know, for our guests. And uh, we have a bar next door, which is Summit Bar. Uh, again, very, very nice, intimate bar, really cool with a chimney coming from the roof down with, uh, I mean, it's really cool. And then we have a uh, restaurant which is just outside, um, which is Pomodoro, mm -hmm. a very well established um, Italian restaurant here in town. And uh, many locals come because of the pasta, of the pizza, the way we serve. The, I mean, the restaurant is really fantastic. I mean, when I, when I came here uh, a couple of months ago, um, yes, I mean, I looked around um, what we buy, from where we buy it, and I started to get in touch with our suppliers. Mm -hmm. I went there, I visited them, I looked around, and the region is very rich here. You can, you can buy almost anything here. It's, uh, I mean, there's nothing really you cannot buy here within the region. And best example is, for example, uh, Andreas Caminata, a couple of kilometers from me, who mm. buys almost everything from here. Other colleagues are similar, and I try to buy as much as I can from here. We mm. buy. Um, the, re the, the question recently was, you know, fish, what fish we buy? And I said instantly, I said, let's go with uh, cycling, which is from here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fresh. Yeah. It's from the region. People like it. It's something we, we love to cook with. We buy our fruit and veg from here. We have our, our butcher is from, from within Flims. Yeah. Um, potatoes we, from Albany or? The potatoes are from there. Then we have found a, a pepper, a black pepper, which is grown in one of the valleys here and we use this to uh, season our meat. Okay. Um, and yes, we, I mean, the journey started a couple of months ago, but it's by far not finished and it just started here. So there's a lot more to come uh, when it comes to uh, um, the region, you know, the food and the seasonality. Oh, we take problem. advantage of the technology as much as we can. A um, couple of years ago, I started experimenting with sweet because I I didn't know, simply. Um, and nowadays we cook uh, a lot in sous vide. We mm. cook banquets, you know, for 200 people. We put our meat in sous vide and cook it slowly. We mm. uh, marinate the meat, meat beforehand, um, cook it very slowly mm. uh, and gently in, 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 a, in a water bath. And then give it a nice roast on the grill. Um, we cook... Uh, as, as much as we can uh, with this technique. But the guys here in Epoca, in Epoca for example, they use um, fermentation technique. They use uh, more sort of things. And we look at whatever is suitable for us mm -hmm. in other restaurants. We adapt and we, you know, we, we, we ask our colleagues for help. So it's an, it's, it links into, into other restaurants and yeah. We, we try to make use of this kind of technique as much as we can. I mean, the traditional way of cooking will never, never, ever uh, go away from us. You mm. will always braise things, you will always uh, boil something, you will always do these things which have been established hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you know. Mm. But I think you can have both. It's part of the culture. Yes, and, and mix it and become even better. I'm getting feedback from customers by talking to them, but uh, a big source is obviously you get feedback from all sort of internet uh, sources, from you know, Reviews. you name it, TripAdvisor, Google, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et and you you read them, and if in in a whole year one person said, you know, uh, he didn't like one dish, that might be a preference of that one person. But if you have a repeated feedback of something you should not ignore it. You should look at this, you should be critical enough to see, uh, to say there might be something which I have overseen and uh, look at this and adjust. In London, we had a seafood restaurant, very famous seafood restaurant called Caspers, 
mm. famous around uh, London throughout and um, seafood was one of the big things. Now one of the things we had there were oysters. First one kind, then another one and then we put three different oysters on the menu. Now I don't like oysters. So if it would have been according to me, to my preferences, the oysters would never be on the menu. But that would be a complete mistake because we sold oysters like you know, people came for oysters, yeah? So, as I said, it's good to have your personal preference, but you need to look at the environment, you yeah. know, where are you? My hometown, which is... Lindau. Uh, which is Lindau. I'm basically, we're here back uh, in our home area. It's, okay. It's an hour and a half from here. Yeah. It's, uh, I left there when I was very young and I come back when I'm very old. <laughs> <laughs> Surf is um, closing again. <laughs> uh, but it's always a pleasure when I go back. I always enjoy uh, this, this city, this area, you know, seeing old friends. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, that's my home. Yeah, and this is what I enjoy.